for everybody out there who's slow to the punch still don't know what's happening i'm gonna drop this video for y'all if you're not working on building your private client base if you're not working on getting out of ride chair working on something auxiliary to ride chair like last night i had to do a repair last night I, I dropped my videos all the time i did a repair and that's how i make some of my money on the side away from ride chair when ride chair is drying up you need to be working on the plan this video is going to show you how they're introducing driverless vehicles to the point where they're going to expand to other cities and if you listen to the mayor of phoenix the mayor even speaks about how the only reason why waymo is not in your city right now is because of political pressure i'm telling you all these apps are in politicians pockets she tells you right here on this video political pressure is the only thing keeping these cars out of your city they're coming Welcome back. Hooked on science, robo taxi services are growing in select cities across the country, and their popularity is exploding in Phoenix, Arizona. NBC's Valerie Castro went to check them out and see firsthand what's working and what's not. Here in Phoenix, robo taxis are a hot ride. Open up the app, choose a destination, and just a few moments later, all right, the car is here. I'm going to use the app to unlock it. And away we go. Hello, Valerie. So we just hopped in the Waymo. There is no driver behind the wheel, and we're going to go pick up the mayor of Phoenix. The robo taxi, owned by Google parent company Alphabet, takes us for a smooth while cautious ride. Now, I'm going to say something funny in a minute, but remember the name of this company, Alphabet. Alphabet is a division of Google. Remember the name Alphabet. That's all I'm going to tell you the steering wheel turning as if an invisible hand is guiding it. And when we get to a stop sign, complete stop, we reach our destination with no issues. We've arrived. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? Excellent. Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego is a big fan. Waymo drivers don't have the kind of bad days that, that human drivers do. Do you think this is safer than an actual human being behind the wheel? The technology can see so many more things and process it so much more quickly. I think in the long term, it will be safer. And this is how politicians set up the narrative. They start saying the words long term because they know in the short term, we see everything. We're drivers. We're in the streets. We see everything processing in real time. They don't say it's safer. They always throw that word long term. Even during the pandemic, what did they say? They kept saying long term. C-19. They kept saying long term. This is going to work out better for you in the long term. Watch politicians. Whenever they say the word long term, you know it's a catch coming because they'll say, oh, we didn't foresee that coming. Why is this working so well here in Phoenix? I think we've been very open to the technology and, and there have been some political challenges in other communities that we have not had. Political challenges in other cities that we have not had. Not safety issues, not, you know, transportation issues, political issues, laws, regulations. And who runs our laws and regulations? Politicians. What are the issues? Lobbyists. Why do you think in Massachusetts, Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash agreed to stop putting money into lobbying? They agreed to it. They put $45 million into lobbying against companies that can come in. Now, all of a sudden... Here in Arizona, what do you hear? Oh, we don't have those political issues like some other communities got. They know what they're saying. It's a little backdoor way of saying we don't get bribed like other communities get bribed. We have an open grid system of streets, and so I think that is probably a little bit easier to navigate. But incidents like this low-speed crash into a telephone pole in May, leading to a software recall of its Phoenix fleet, more than 600 cars. The robo-taxis caught on camera making other mistakes, turning into oncoming traffic in Tempe, swerving in and out of its lane, driving into a construction zone, and ignoring an officer's instructions to pull to the side of the road. Sir, there's no one there. Waymo declining to comment on specific incidents, but adding that they continue to refine the technology. Now, incidents that they don't report on is unsafe pickup areas. The other day, my man Jesse, you guys see him in the chat all the time. He's here in Arizona with us. He sent me a text message. So he's sitting on 7th Avenue in Roosevelt, right in front of the Circle K, one of the busiest intersections. As soon as you get off the highway to come into downtown and hit Roosevelt and all those areas, that intersection is crazy, crazy. Why did a Waymo stop right there on the corner to pick up somebody? 
Jesse took a picture of this dude. This is a Waymo sitting here waiting on somebody. Had the hazard zone and everything waiting on somebody. They set the pickup right at that intersection. Any driver knows going to the Circle K parking lot, going to the dispensary parking lot, do not sit on that corner. If a, if a driver did it, we'd be given a ticket. We get tickets all the time threatened to be when we try to pick up on Jefferson, if we try to pick up on Washington, because those are some of the busiest streets out there. But with Waymo's, their tech don't know that. You could set a pickup anywhere you want to pick up. They don't know going to the Circle K parking lot. Go here, go there. And this is how accidents happen. When that car was sitting there on 7th and Roosevelt, had traffic backed up, nobody could go across the street. It's only one lane. Once you cross across 7, going east on Roosevelt, you can't go anywhere. So that car was sitting right there holding up the lane. Many times I've driven. Coming down the street from a party pickup or something like that. Waymo sitting dead center of the street. Cars parked down both sides of the street. Drivers, we know, to snake our way in, sit in front of somebody's driveway, or sit out of the street to let drivers come through. Waymo will sit flat dead center. Now we got cars in both directions building up. And y'all know I did a video the other day showing a Waymo sitting. I was on my way to pick up my passenger right on Mill and, and Southern. It was a Waymo sitting there with a the hazard zone just sitting at Mill and Southern. I went, picked my passenger up, came back. Waymo still sitting on Mill and Southern with the hazards on, middle of the street, just sitting there. See, they don't talk about, we see everything in real time. These cars are going to cause some major accidents, major issues, because people are riding around looking at the navigation. They're talking to people, they're messing with the radio, this and that. And you got these cars sitting plop dead in the middle of busy intersections that nobody expects. You come out, turn, bam, you smack into a Waymo. What the, where the hell does this car come from? You making a turn, you trying to go around somebody, bam, smack into a Waymo. Where the hell this car come from? One time, the Waymos were trying to get on the freeway. Well, Waymos couldn't get on the freeway. There were cones that everybody had to get up on the freeway because the road, the frontage was closed, and then you drop back down on the frontage road. Waymos wouldn't do it. So they sat there in front of the cones holding up traffic all the way down the frontage road because Waymos won't get on the freeway. So a driver would know, hey, the frontage road is closed up. Let me jump on the freeway. I can get off at the next exit. Waymo's are not programmed to do that. These cars in real time, like I said, that's what I always say, long term, long, because there's a lot of screw ups right now. A lot of screw ups. They can't navigate real life. They want to make our life seem like a big video game, play with remote control cars and shit like that. They don't want to do this for real. We out here doing this for real. We seeing what's going on. You will never see the news interview us about Waymo. They won't do it. They'd rather interview the mayor who's involved in getting Waymo here, involved in the economy of it. They're, they'll interview somebody from the news or somebody. You're going to see other people interview, but you will see they never interviewed a ride share driver this whole segment. This is a completely biased segment, and I just wanted you to see it. Waymo is the subject of an investigation by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration for various collisions, saying several incidents involved collisions with clearly visible objects that a competent driver would be expected to avoid. Waymo saying in part, NHTSA plays a very important role in road safety, and we will continue to work with them as part of our mission to become the world's most trusted driver. In other cities, driverless taxis are also making headlines. Waymo, going the wrong way! A cruise vehicle owned by General Motors and a competitor of Waymo's running over and dragging a woman who had just been struck by a hit-and-run driver last year in San Francisco. In a statement, Cruz said its car braked aggressively to minimize the impact with the woman after the other car launched the pedestrian directly in front of the cruise vehicle. You caught that, didn't you? I know you saw what they just said. They said Waymo and Cruz, they don't have predictive reasoning. We have predictive reasoning. We see when something is wrong. We see when somebody's coming from over here or when a car hits something and something might end up in our path. We have predictive reasoning. We know what's coming up. They can't predict. They're situational. They're very reactive and not proactive. We as drivers are proactive. We see when something's bouncing across the field. We go, oh shit, that's going to end up in the street. Hold up, slow down, slow down. That's Oh man, he finna hit that. Oh, if he hit that, then that's gonna come in my path. We have predictive reasoning. They don't have logic like that. They see everything based on data, what's already going on in front of them. They try to have instant reaction time because that's what they're programmed to have. When you have a driverless vehicle that cannot be proactive and is purely reactive, you asking for problems. Cause you need somebody in real time out in these streets that see what's going on. Oh man. I know on this street right here, it's a huge pothole all the time and cars be swerving all the time over here. So make sure you drive safe on this street because the car gonna swerve and get in front of you. 
just like clockwork you go around the corner car swerves to get around the pothole you knew it was coming you slowed down a long time ago because you've been on this street before waymo never been on this street or maybe it has it just don't have that proactive reasoning it's coming down the street car swerves it slams on brakes because see at first what no car in front of it all the cars are coming but this driver at the last minute says oh man a pothole i gotta swerve they swerve waymo hits brakes real hard could cause an accident waymo is nothing like a driver they always oh, going to be the best driver on the street until you have enough experience and you are proactive enough to do this job you are not going to be the best driver you may have quickest reaction time to something but I have the quickest proactive time to you. I already know what's going to happen. I done beat you to the punch already, Waymo. Regulators temporarily suspending the company's permits. Waymo criticized for causing traffic jams and stopping in the middle of the street. Hi, how are you? Crossing guards telling NBC Bay Area they've nearly been hit in the crosswalk. It did not recognize me in the intersection. But back in Phoenix, Waymo says it's growing, dominating 315 square miles around the city, the largest metro area it serves in the country, and it's the only robo-taxi that picks up and drops off at a major airport. Andrew Maynard is a professor at Arizona State University School for the Future of Innovation in Society. Waymo, as other companies that are developing similar technologies, are, are still learning. So it's not 100% safe. If we have a technology that occasionally runs into poles, maybe that's the price to pay for developing a technology which will ultimately, hopefully, be safer than humans. Removing the human element is why a community group called Phoenix Babes Who Walk partnered with the company, calling it a safer option for women and members of marginalized groups traveling alone who might encounter a bad experience with a rideshare driver. We've had folks who are um, gay or lesbian and they're afraid to get into their car and hold their spouse's hand um, because of what might happen with their driver, comments that may come up um, unsolicited. <laughs> You're kidding me. This is why they saying they don't want a driver. I don't want a driver because I want to hold somebody's hand and I don't want the driver to say something. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Remember I told you about the Alphabet company? I told the Alphabet. I said it was going to come up. Alphabet. This ain't Waymo. This is gay mo. I'm telling you, this is gay mo. This is what they doing it for. Now they trying to get the LBGT like linked into it. Hey, man, we're here for you gay folks. We're going to link in with y'all. If we can link in with y'all, we can help spread it. Man, come on. I done had gay dudes kissing my car. All right, honey, see you later. Kiss each other and get out. They ain't going to try to kiss on me, so I ain't worried about nobody gay. I'm seeing gay girls back there hugged up, riding, talking about their marriage and kids and everything. Shit don't bother me. All of this is fear mongering. All this is narrative selling. They want to turn this into gay mo all of a sudden. Oh, yeah, if you gay, you can ride with us. It's totally safe. You know, drivers, they be mad at gay people. Man, I don't care about no gay people. They ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm here to pick you up. I'm going to get you to your spot safely. Appreciate the tip or whatever. Hey, hope you do well at the interview tomorrow. I ain't got no problem with gay people, so why the hell you want to try to sell it? Yeah, it's going to be unsolicited comments towards us because I was holding somebody's hand. Hey, I see you, motherfucker. I'm looking at the road in front of me. I'm not trying to look in my rear. I can't even see you hold nobody's hand from my rear view mirror. My rear view mirror is aiming out the back window. Your hands is way down here. So to sit up there and go, yeah, they're going to see me holding hand. Can't even see that far. I'm looking at the back window. I'm looking at the front. I'm looking on my side. I'm making sure we don't get hit. Waymo ain't worried about you. I'm not worried about you. This is game mode. This is all it is. Just game mode. While the tech continues to improve, some believe it could become the norm down the road. To me, the most exciting scenario is that we use self-driving cars as a stepping stone to a future where we have completely rethought transportation. Interesting, interesting story. I think for now, I'm going to stick with someone driving behind the wheel. Hey, news lady, you got your driver right here, news lady. You want somebody to drive you? I got a big truck. I got the Beamer. I got the Jeep. You want somebody behind the wheel? Hit me up, news lady. I'm going to call you news lady because I looked at the interview and <laughs> see your name. <laughs> so you news lady. You can call me driver. I'll call you news lady. I roll up. Hey, I'm here to pick up news lady. She's like, what's up, driver? See, that's how we're going to talk to each other right there. You ain't going to call me Jeff. I ain't going to call you whoever you are. You news lady. <laughs> Block me. <laughs> How the hell y'all gonna block ban me from my own video? Y'all wrong for that. 